Hi, everybody. This is Marcus Fares, founder and editor-in-chief of Dezine, broadcasting live from the Dezine studio in London. And welcome to day two of Rado Design Week. This is a week-long collaboration between Dezine and Swiss watch brand Rado. Um, I'm delighted today to be joined by uh, Rado CEO, Adrian Bossard, and Vice President of Product Development at Rado, Hakim El Kadiri in Switzerland. Hi there, guys. Hi, how are you? Hello, very good. Hello again, Adrian. Nice to see you again. And you too, Hakim. Just briefly introduce the two of you, please. Tell us who you are and what you do. Marcus, my name is uh, Adrian Bossart, uh, and uh, I'm working already 24 years in the beautiful watch industry in the Swatch Group. And I just joined uh, the global recognized uh, mythical brand Rado since uh, July 2020. Cool. And you, Hakim, tell us a little bit about you. what you do. Okay, so I'm Hakim El Kadiri. I'm working for Rado for now something like 10 years. I'm responsible of the development of the project and the product. And uh, I had the pleasure to work with the fantastic team for Oma Fantasma we're going to, to hear now. Yeah, I'll introduce former Fantasma in just one second. But first of all, tell us what is Rado Design Week? What are we doing this week together? Okay. Okay. So um, today, as you know, I mean, um, so uh, Rado is working with the design for many years, and uh, this year is really a specific year. So due to the pandemic we have, and uh, so we wanted to do something big also uh, in life. But the idea was to do something with you, with design, in order to uh, have the first design week together. So that's the only way today uh, to communicate uh, to show the product. Uh, uh, we had in mind at the beginning of the year to develop something also with Forma Fantasma that was also for the uh, Milano Design Week, so for F Milano Fuori, but that was not feasible. And uh, so we don't know exactly how long this pandemic will, will, uh, will last, but we hope not that long. But I think it was also a really good idea really to work with Design in order to show the novelties and to um, promote also the designers. And, uh, and this week we're unveiling together four different variations of the True Square watch. You've, you've asked four different designers to do their interpretation of the watch. Yesterday we saw Yoi Studio's interpretation. And today let's introduce, speaking live from Amsterdam, former Phantasma. Hi, guys. Hi, hello everyone. Hi. Marcus, before uh, giving the word to uh, Simone and Andrea, you know, the creative uh, artists, uh, I would like to underline also the importance about such collaboration from our side. You have to be aware Rado is uh, a very mythical uh, global brand, uh, which uh, has its roots until 1917. And here exactly on this place where we are uh, located here, the brand was founded uh, over 100 years ago. And finally, during all uh, these uh, historical years, uh, all the engineers and all the watchmakers who are working in, uh, this, uh, uh, in this city here in now they had the passion and the aim to create unique pieces with uh, a lot of uh, design features with a lot of material strengths and therefore the link between designers and our brand is definitely very obvious and uh, finally uh, Rato had always the aim to not create just round normal time pieces uh, uh, we had always also uh, the aim to create unique pieces in terms of design, unique pieces in terms of, uh, of shape. And uh, the product which uh, uh, will be presented today is definitely a very strong provocation also to show what kind of creativity can be realized between a brand who is uh, in a traditional industry, Swiss watch industry, but with crea 
uh, very creati uh, creative Itali Italian designers. And therefore, we are very proud to have uh, this collaboration. And uh, I have on my wrist here already a watch, the through square skeleton, a watch which is probably a little bit less creative than the watch will be presented afterward. But uh, it's based uh, with uh, the same uh, case and also with the same passion from our designers here inside, from our watchmakers who are working with a lot of competence to create very precise movements, also very reliable movements, and especially also with all the competence to create a material which is for the customer and for the wearer, a uh, product which is very, very nice to wear because ceramic is a material which uh, you no feel on the wrist, has a lot of wear comfort. Finally, it's scratch proof. Uh, also, the, the ceramic is taking the temperature of your body. So it's really a, a very, uh, very pleasant timepiece to wear. And our competence, our uh, experience in the Swiss watchmaking uh, industry and the creative aspects uh, from Forma Fantasma, it's definitely uh, also a symbiose which is giving uh, a unique timepiece which will be uh, presented now from Andrea and Simone. Well, you definitely chose a good team to work with on this particular watch because Andrea and Simone, congratulations, guys. You were named last week designers of the year at the Design Awards virtual ceremony. Let's go back to you guys now in Amsterdam. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, it was really amazing to uh, receive this award, and especially um, before a weekend. You know, it's a, it's a good way to start a weekend, even during a pandemic. So thank you for, for that. And well, Congratulations. Uh, thank you. Uh, well, I'm Andrea. And, and Simone. And uh, tell us briefly about yourselves and, and then briefly, because you're going to give a presentation later, but briefly how you got involved with Rado and how you've worked together on this watch. Well, you know, our studio is based in Amsterdam since uh, a lot of years, uh, 10 years by now. But we had a chance to actually meet uh, Hakim in previous presentation we we're doing in, um, during the Salon del Mobile in Milan. And he got to know our, our work. And finally, there was this occasion to work together. And of course, we have never been working on uh, watches you can wear. We have been working with, with clocks before, but not with watches. And when he asked if we wanted to be involved with this project, of course, knowing also the fact that Rado was working with designers since a lot of years, we thought this you know, was a great occasion for us to work on a typology we have never experienced before. Great. Well, we're going to see and hear a lot more about your the watch you've developed with Rado in a minute. But let's go back now to Switzerland, Adrian and Hakim. Hello, guys. Yes. Hi. Hi there. So you're going to give a little presentation now about the brand and about the 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 True Square watch and about the collaborations that you've been engaged in as part of Rado Design Week. Okay, so uh, here you see the former building from 1917. Uh, this morning when I arrived here, 1st December, I see, of course, on the same place, but a very modern building uh, with a huge Arado logo on top, with the beautiful Christmas decoration and with already nice snow around as it's usual uh, in December. And finally, I was very proud to see this, uh, this morning at six o'clock when it was still dark, you know, the big logo. And I was aware that in one hour, over 250 people will work in this factory to make timepieces, to enjoy people uh, to, for beautiful uh, timepieces all over the world. And as I have mentioned already before, you see on the right, um, Rado was always, through the whole history, a pioneers with a, a specific and unique designs. And already in the 70s, you see here a product, it, the name was uh, the Rado uh, Glissier. 
it was a hard metal product with this unique uh, shape uh, form. And uh, hard metal has the asset to be scratch proofed and also, you know, uh, finally with a very uh, specific, specific uh, feeling. And uh, Safi Gristle is also scratch proofed and the square shape was at that time very unique. So in terms of design, in terms of materials, uh, during the whole history, we had always this very high, uh, also pioneer spirit. Here you see on the left a young guy and on the right a guy which is still not too old but uh, of course he took uh, some weight and also some gray hair. But you see in the middle a watch which came from the period of when this guy was young. It was me when I was a MotoGP driver in the 90s. And I was always, already in the 80s and the 90s, I was a great admirer from Rado because I'm living close to here in Biel and always when I passed in front of the factory Rado, I was really, you know, admiring this big factory and especially admiring this product. And exactly 30 years ago, finally, I purchased this watch. And this is a Rado Integral, already a shape watch. That will mean I had already at the time the taste of a shape watch. And especially I have the taste to buy a ceramic watch because uh, I was aware to wear a ceramic watch has a lot of advantage. Uh, it's scratch proof and it's really very, very uh, nice to wear this uh, very kind of material. And so, uh, of course, uh, the love to this brand remained. And of course, therefore, I'm really proud to be today after uh, already 24 years experience in the watch industry by the Swatch Group to be the CEO of this mythical, beautiful, globally recognized Switch Watch brand. And uh, this watch is uh, finally my new watch. It's the Rado uh, Suru square skeleton you see here you see we have still this uh, shape uh, form but with a very high-tech mechanical uh, movement with see-through uh, dial and i let afterwards hakim to explain this beauty and of course also in full ceramic and this was the base of the watch which was uh, created after form Forma Fantasma. That will mean uh, also equipped with the best movements, uh, equipped with the best materials, uh, and uh, of course inspired from the big experience which we have from many, many years of Swiss watchmaking. And here you see finally a couple of uh, models which was developed during the last years partly already from Hakim, partly from uh, the watchmakers who have worked before him because he's still a young man. Now in 76, you were not already in the watch industry. No. So uh, Hakim, please explain also uh, how the development of the Suru Square, which I'm wearing now and which was developed from uh, for uh, Forma Fantasma, the development of this uh, square shape by Rado. Yeah. As you can see on the screen, uh, we have a lot of uh, square watches. In fact, uh, the um, company started in uh, 62 to manufacture watches in hard metal. And hard metal was really, really complicated to manufacture. And the first uh, piece was called the Rado Diaster, that was a novel shape. And that is really an iconic product that we have also in the collection. Um, then um, machining the hard metal is really hard because the hard metal is used to machine uh, the stainless steel. And uh, to this kind of material is really something that is not uh, um, developed to do um, jewels or watches. And we had really years to, uh, to work on the product and to really give to this material a really nice, elegant, sophisticated shape. But the only thing um, at that time, so do you, do you see here 76, so we started in 62 to do this kind of material, so the tooling, the machineries were really, really uh, different than the one that we have today. We had also to work with diamonds, diamonds cutting tool. And the only shape that was feasible at that time was um, the square shape, the lines, something that you can just 
do by polishing. So nothing round. Round was not feasible. And uh, so that is the reason why the strength, we have a strength in the square shape because that's the only way of doing uh, this type of watches. And uh, so since that, we won a lot of design prize because that was a brand that was totally different than all other watch brands because usually in the watch brands, so everyone is doing round watches. Today is something which is feasible the round watch in ceramic, but this is for an, another meeting probably, but here, so we talk about the round. And so as we had a lot of uh, design price, we started also working with designer like Gerstner that was in uh, 2000, like uh, Jasper Morrison for the R55 in 2009, or like uh, the Ceramica in 2017, that was a replica or edition of an old product we had in the past in 90s. And uh, we worked with Konstantin Kritschik also to develop this watch. But how came exactly uh, uh, due to this fact I was so inspired about Ronaldo in the past? You know, the integral, uh, you know, at that time you had all the round watches and to have a brand who have a, a, this unique design, this, uh, uh, you know, make me spend a lot of money for different Ronaldo watches for me, for my wife, to this unique design. And this is definitely... It was in the past and also still today, it's one of the strengths of the Rado brand to have this uniqueness, Correct. not only in terms of materials and watchmaking competence, also in terms of design. Mm -hmm. Yes. And uh, as you said, so we started by the material, the design is important. Um, and then, um, so um, after that, uh, after all these projects, we started also to have collaborations with different designers because designers are showing us what the future will be. And uh, so for instance, in 2017, we had um, also the same collaboration with six different designers coming from different countries and different um, design orientations. Like uh, we had people from uh, Switzerland, from Japan, from Poland, from France, from uh, USA, and from, uh, um, I don't remember the last, the last one, but then- so India. We, no, that was not India. <laughs> then, uh, so we had different uh, collaborations. I, I and then after that, so we had also collaboration with, um, with uh, females on the True Silly Line. And this is really uh, the way of giving uh, to designer a kind of frame, a frame. So we can pass maybe to the next sl slide. And uh, so you can see that is the, the, the product that um, Adrian were, was talking about. And you can see that is the product, the product at the beginning, the product which was under development. And the idea was to give to uh, the different designer that you are going to meet this week um, on this platform is you ha we had the shape, we had the bracelet, and then we gave the opportunity to the designers to work on the project, okay, to bring their own DNA. And so we had the platform, the kind of frame, the white frame, and then the designer could change the, the hands, the dial, um, the case back, uh, the color of the case, the color of the bracelet, even the crown, and also changing, for instance, also the strap uh, to, uh, to have something not in ceramic, but to have something else. And that was an opportunity. It's so important for us to see out of the box, to understand also how other people are thinking about the watches. We are usually working with people in the watch industry and they know uh, how to place the applied indexes. You know, you have the 12, you have the six, you have things, you have codes also in developing the design. But here we wanted to, 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 to work with designer uh, who will bring us uh, to the next level and to really see uh, how other people are thinking about the product. Um, so we can just go to the okay. next one. Now, Haki, you have really chosen Courageous Guys with Andrea and Simona, huh? who are more Courageous than when you are doing a design. <laughs> okay, so here, big surprise. Huh? Okay, so that is um, the Forma Fantasma watch. So you can see it's something which is different, but I think the thing is, uh, really to let uh, Andrea and Simone talking about the, the project. Uh, so you can recognize the shape, but you see it's something which looks totally different. Uh, and um, so we let them really play on it, really uh, um, place their own fingerprints on the product. And that is talking about 
the materiality, because that's important. And I think most of the designers are working, first of all, by, with the material, and the material is giving the idea of the project. But I think the best people who can be really talk about this pro product are Andrea and Simone. Okay, so the scene is open for you, Andrea and Simone. Okay, thank you very much, Adrian and Hakim. We'll come back to you with, with some questions afterwards, but let's go straight to Andrea and Andrea and Simone now, who can pick up the story from there. Are you there, guys? Yes. Yes, we are ready. So uh, maybe before that we actually speak about the watch we designed at Corrado, maybe we can introduce uh, a bit ourselves, what we do, so that people understand better where we, we come from. So, sure. As we said before, we are based in Amsterdam. I'm uh, Simone, and uh, we're here with Andrea. And uh, we are working uh, in the Netherlands since uh, 10 years, and we have been developing a series of very different works, highly experimental and research-based. And in fact, we decided to open this presentation with an exhibition which is recently closed at Serpentine Galleries in London, the Serpentine Tackler Gallery, um, which is called Cambio where we looked into the industry of timber and look at it from an ecological perspective. In fact, the exhibition was really uh, trying to look at the governance of the timber industry, because we believe that uh, on a design level, there's uh, several ways that we can move uh, forward and create real innovation. But one of these is also to take responsibility for the ecological implications of uh, design. And we chose the subject of the timber industry because we felt it was an extremely um, pervasive industry and only knowing more about the political forces and the geopolitical forces shaping the industry would allow us to uh, think about more in a more informed way of the choices we make when we design uh, things. Something else that we do within the studio is exhibition design. Indeed, like at the beginning, we were speaking with Akim and with Rado about exhibition design for the salon. And unfortunately, it didn't happen. But actually, the exhibition we are, I'm showing now it happened. It happened at the Rijksmuseum in, in Amsterdam. It was an exhibition about Caravaggio and Bernini. And uh, there we really, uh, I'm making really this story very short, but we really try to kind of unpack the, uh, what is usually happened with the exhibition about Caravaggio. You know, Caravaggio is usually presented in a dark environment with really dramatic light. And we really took a, a completely different approach, actually highlighting the dramatic effect within the painting, uh, but really taking a different approach. So having like this beautiful canvas, they were all colored um, and with different colors on, um, on the walls. The idea was mainly to create also a, uh, a filter between the darkness of the paintings and the whiteness of the wall, uh, creating like these um, areas of, of color that would make the contrast between the white of the wall and the darkness of the painting less, uh, less intense. And it was also a way to use color as a powerful tool to uh, somehow show us in a different lights, paintings and artworks, which are absolutely terrific. But sadly, because of the, the way they are presented, they are often um, contextualized in a, um, through cliches, which is something that we, we hate. And I think a lot of our work is really about challenging cliches and stereotypical idea of what uh, what in fact uh, design design is, which is something that we explore uh, with with Cambio, but also many other uh, exhibitions, and also when we do exhibition design. Um, this uh, other work we are presenting instead uh, was developed for a British producer called uh, Czech, and it is a, a series of tiles for architecture. But I think what is interesting about uh, this, and it is somehow linking also to the work with with Rada because we use in this case ceramic. But the glazing material here is a um, non-extractive glaze. What we mean with that is that we use ashes from a Vietnam volcano to, the, to develop um, glazes for ceramic. And of course, the volcano being active and erupting, uh, it uh, produces um, ashes that are, in this sense, non-extractive. And uh, uh, through um, different mixes and, and the granularity of the of the glaze we obtain this palette of color and um, this is also we feel a very different approach because whenever we were developing a specific uh, project a lot of the producers we've been speaking with they were really asking us all the time which is the kind of um, aesthetic result you want to obtain and we're trying to push it instead of a different idea which is not about 
the aesthetic outcome, but it is about the process and the context we decide to work with. And so in a specific case, we were interested in really understanding if there is the possibility of using volcanic ashes in, in a different way and to use a non-extractive material for a specific application. Um, uh, and this work was actually developed in the course of many years. This is something that often happened in, in, in our case when we develop a uh, research-based uh, project that we uh, embark in a, in a, let's say, in a journey, journey which is extremely, extremely, extremely long. And in this case, it started with a previous work uh, already in 2014. 14. It was presented in 2014. And then this materialized in 2018, I think. So sometimes this is really, you know, part of our, of our process. Some of our researchers, they have different kinds of outcomes. And in some cases, they even become educational programs. We're now heading a department at Design Academy in, in Eindhoven, where some of the works we feel we cannot even develop internally in the studio are handed over and developed by, by others. Um, and, um, and in this case, instead, it was much more a product-based uh, outcome that we managed to develop in the course of a few years. Well, and of course, also talking about time and the long collaboration, also the, uh, the watch we designed for rather took a long time because um, the, you know, the material was already there, but to, to work and, uh, on the, our ideas, I think it took uh, quite a long time, both for convincing them that that was a good idea, but also that um, you know, we made some changes in the watch that took a long time to make sure that that would have happened. Well, we start with this slide, which is, um, let's say it was one of our inspiration when we started working on the watch, which is really these pocket watches. And what we thought was fascinating, in fact, is uh, how the, the reading of time in some cases is actually filtered, sorry. I, it's, it's somehow filtered and it's, uh, um, you know, covered by a different, uh, by a different layer of, of material. And this somehow became for us a source of inspiration because of course, you know, when we think about Rado's watches, of course, we can talk about the craftsmanship, the, the use of materials, but somehow what is also interesting about watches is that the many people that are interested in wearing and using watches, they don't do that only because of the uh, function that the watch has, but also because of the love for the object in itself, which goes beyond the, the function. And we actually started really working on this idea. And also on the fact that we were extremely fascinated by the fact that they are working with ceramic as a, as a material. But the first time we saw their the watches, what we thought was interesting is that when you touch the watch, when you wear it, you realize that actually it is using ceramic because of course the feel is slightly different and also the temperature of the material is different. But the, the way of treating of the material is so much, uh, you know, uh, perfect and so high tech that I think a lot of people do not even recognize ceramic is the material used in the, in the watch itself. So we had these two starting points. We really wanted to highlight the use of ceramic in the, in the watch. And the other idea, which was really the, um, yeah. the, the, the interest that, that people had for, for watches, for watchmaking, goes beyond the function. It's really about also the, the object in itself, which is somehow desirable and interesting for, uh, for uh, the users. At the beginning, we were also thinking about using ceramic and leather, but, but then at the end, we really decided to go full, full ceramic for, for the watch. In fact, we really wanted to focus on uh, fully on ceramic, and this was one of our, um, well, not definitely not the first sketch, it's actually one of the, the latest sketch of the watch. But we really had this idea of making this watch completely covered in ceramic, where the ceramic is almost becoming a shield, a protection shield for the watch in itself, um, and where the ability of reading the time is still there, so the function is still there, but it is, uh, the least as possible. It's basically, this is the minimum you need to actually be able to read the, the time. And then ceramic is taking center stage in the, in the watch. This was really our concern in a way when we designed the, the watch. The, the, the focus was supposed to be into the material. We really wanted to do not have any specific glaze or treatment of the surface. We wanted to have the feeling of leaving the material extremely naked and extremely visible. Uh, to communicate even more the materiality of the material in itself. 
and this is uh, the watch when it comes at its uh, you know at its final at its final end. And as you can see, the, the as Andrea was explaining before, at one point we were really considering to have the bracelet in in leather, uh, but we at the end we decided really to go for this feeling of of an object which is completely naked, which is one material only. And it expressed this feeling of, um, I would say, simplicity, of calmness in a way, despite being, uh, you know, uh, quite radical, probably, uh, you know, in its, uh, in its design, uh, but still maintaining its uh, its function. So also the, the the feeling of the material, I think, it is uh, what is uh, re really relevant for us in the design development, and the fact that the object feels somehow naked, and, and I would say almost use the word honest in, the, in its use of materials. Thank you. Great. Thank you very much. Is that your last slide? Yes. So you, you guys have worked with all kinds of interesting materials. I mean, lava, for example, bread. How, how does, and, and often in a very crafty way, like a lot of handwork involved in, in your work. So how does that compare with working with industrial ceramic? Was that a big jump for you? Was that the first time you've worked with such an industrial process before? And how did you find it? Well, I would say probably it was one of the most uh, engineering industrial materials we have been working uh, since uh, you know we established our studio. But I would say that that's not necessarily a big jump for us because uh, a lot of our work is really about reading things in context and, and about um, uh, researching a subject and accepting its, its uh, possibilities and also its limitations. So I don't think that I think this for us was extremely inspiring because of course, the way of using ceramic here is not that it's something that, it, that we could reach easily. You know, it's, it is extremely skilled and extremely uh, technologically advanced. It is, uh, you know, uh, a form of in injection molding of ceramic, which is extremely sophisticated. So for us, this is uh, inspiring because we cannot reach this in our daily practice in the studio. I mean, of course, we also work with companies like, I mean, Floss for the lighting, and but it also there is about you know like a lot of technical uh, components, but it's not about materials here. You know what you need to do is to let the material speak. So I think it was quite ex excellent, like the kind of collaboration because it's really entered within our uh, we're working. You know, we usually work, as you said, Marcus, with materials. So that was a perfect uh, commission. Also, I would like to add something else. Probably uh, as uh, Hakim was explaining before. Uh, what I'd rather do is to give almost like a white canvas, which is already like the, the shape of the watch. And it's about designing, interpreting it. So considering this framework, I think our attempt was really to uh, think about what we could do from our side and respecting our ethos for, for Rado. And our attempt was really to highlight a material which is uh, often, you know, at the center of what Rado does, but it can be easily um, not completely understood, I think, for a lot of uh, viewers that if they did not have the possibility to experience the material itself, they could even completely uh, misjudge the material for a, you know, for metal for something else. And our attempt was somehow to reveal, you know, the material at the base of the uh, rather watches. And I've been to your studio, what I've been to your former studio and seen how you work with materials. You have lots of samples, you try things out, you handle them, you smash them, you cut them. Were you able to do that with this ceramic? Because I can imagine that uh, an industrial ceramic, you can't just you can't just play with it in the studio. Oh. You need a, a big infrastructure. You need kilns. You need machines. How did you manage to get that hands-on experience of the material? Well, we asked a lot of samples. So, for instance, at the beginning, we really wanted to have a specific kind of white and gray, and we reached that. But then we asked for tons of samples. So. Uh, well, well, we couldn't experiment here within the studio, but we made them experiment with them. For instance, but this is also the strength of a collaboration like, you know, Forma Fantasma and Rado, because uh, they are bringing ideas. We have the r &D, we have the experience how to work with, uh, with ceramic. And finally, with this collaboration, we are able to bring out uh, such object. And the point which uh, Simone said really uh, impressed me, you know, you're not coming from the watch industry, but uh, you have understood very fast also the watch industry. 
Often, of course, we believe that uh, a watch wearer have to watch just to look the time. Of course, look the time is one uh, element, but what is even more important uh, to have the love of the object. Uh, because uh, a watch is uh, an element which you are wearing, uh, you know, minimum 16 hours per day, several people even 24 hours a day, day per day, and, and of course, mainly years per years. And it's an object which is very close to your body. You are looking always, and you have, uh, you are creating an emotion toward this object. And uh, finally, when you are aware what kind of competence you have in uh, inside, what kind of culture you have inside, what kind of design inspiration you have, it's much more than just an object to look at the time. It's uh, an object to have a personal message to you personally, but also to the others. And uh, also the inspiration to have the ceramic full around, just a small opening. Of course, it gives even more the spirit to feel this unique material even further. And several times it's necessary to have guys like you, you know, to push us further, to make a step and to make a very, a very courageous design. Because, of course, we are always thinking about, of course, would it be commercial? And here you said, no, we will do something which is unique, inspired from your uh, ideas, from your uh, view of the things. And, uh, you know, we like such provocations and we have already seen internally. Of course, you have people, they say, no, I would never wear it. But you have other people say, oh, this is unique. We have ceramic all over. I can touch a ceramic. You know, we don't need watches who like everybody. We need watches who are really touching the heart of a certain target group. And this you achieved. Thank you. Hakim, when you saw the proposals from former Fatasma, I mean, it's almost as if they're hiding your work. I mean, you've designed this, you, you and your team have designed this beautiful watch where you can, the skeleton, you can see what's going on inside it. Former Fantasma come along and kind of cover that all up. Were you offended by that? <laughs> Not at all. Uh, so that was really the idea to have. I mean, as uh, uh, I said, and as uh, also Simon had said before, so it's really to give them the free page. And they really have and had to work on that so we are giving them this kind of white page and after that so we have to solve the problem and i like uh, the problems like this because it's always challenging to find okay here you said okay we had the ceramic but not we we didn't have the ceramic so we had to develop also this new uh color so that was kind of complicated because it's something which is white, but which is not really white, which is kind of off-white because the idea at the beginning was also to work on the clay, on the color of the clay. And I think we achieved it also, but we had also to try to develop, to go further and to find things like this. And instead of having the sapphire crystal on top, we had also to do something which is a cover that is going to be on top of the watch, that is going to close everything, that is going to hide, that is going to, to, to give another dimension to the product. And we had also to create that. And all the watches that we are doing are really going to pass all the specific uh, tests that we have in the watchmaking industry, which are really tough. So that was also something complicated to achieve. We had some, some troubles, we had some problems, but at the end, so we have the, pro the, the product. And uh, so I'm really happy because if you see what Forma Fantasma brought to us, if you see other products, they are totally different. They are really something that we are not going to create by ourselves because that is not our world, but they are really opening our eyes to find new technologies, to find new ideas, to find something that is going to, to talk to someone else also, uh, and not only the watch lover, who is going to, 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 to like the watch that we have on the back wall, which is something which is really um, uh, skeletonized, which is really uh, watch making oriented. So it's something that is different. That is, I, I mean, I think the product is fantastic. The product that we have, I mean, from all the designers, but also the one from Format Fantasma is really fantastic. And this is going to bring us uh, to another level and um, and so we are open also to, to work with that kind of uh, project. Andrea and Simone. Uh, it, it, 
it's also underlining finally the philosophy which we have uh, to be provocative and to be pioneering and to be courageous uh, to, to try something. Because, uh, of course, we are doing a lot of watches who are, let's say, a little bit uh, mainstream watches when you can read the time and, you know, but of course, always we are creating with our competence, with our technologies, things who are specific, who are unique, who are doing, of course, uh, they're polarizing, they like or you don't like, but this product really uh, they pushed us even further to be provocative, to be pioneering. And uh, finally, more I lock the product and more I look also in the inspiration, inspiration. I like the idea and we are proud to be part of this project. And you can read the time, actually. So. <laughs> yeah, of course, you know, even without glasses, uh, be sure, Andrea, <laughs> even without glasses. But guys, Andrea and Simone, were you tempted to be even more provocative and completely cover the, the watch so you couldn't see the time at all and it just became a piece yeah. of jewelry and about the material? It's interesting to say that because actually when we were working on the presentation uh, for Milan, as they mentioned before, it wasn't, uh, it wasn't that. Actually, we were working on a sort of a retrospective exhibition for Rado of their work uh, with different designers and, uh, and also a presentation of our own watch. And what we were proposing is exactly to have a transition uh, where you would have several models of, this, of uh, our own watch, but where one would be completely closed and suddenly there would be this small opening growing to the final dimension. So yes, in a way that was our, uh, actually that was our initial thought, to be honest. But of course we wanted to give, to maintain the function, but it was in a way not a way to, um, to be provocative for the sake of it, but we were really thinking about the nature of this object in the contemporary time, which has a relevance, which is absolutely there, which has to do also with the, with the watchmaking, with the kind of technology, with the lock for time. You know, this is, this is an object will always exist. You know, watches will always exist, no matter what we can read the time in our phones and so on. And, uh, and that's because there is a love for, for the object, for the technology, for the craftsmanship, for the development of it. And, uh, and our watch is trying to, paradoxically, highlighting that by covering it. And finally, because we're nearly out of time, the same question for, for Former Phantasma and for the Rado team. So starting with you, Former Phantasma, what was, the, what was the biggest challenge and what was the biggest thing you learned as part of this collaboration? Well, actually a very basic one that for us was very surprising, but seriously to achieve the, the right color, which Again, it's a paradox, which is a color that for us feels the closest to ceramic in its more uh, raw. traditional raw form. It was the biggest challenge in its development. So that was really honestly quite surprising. But, uh, you know, it was the, the most difficult part was the achievement of this very natural color. To make it white. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not white. It's great. It's just almost like skin color, but grayish. Yeah. Okay, and Adrian and Hakim, for you, what was the most challenging aspect of this and, and what did you learn from this for collaboration? Hakim, definitely the biggest uh, challenge was, of course, to pass through this project with all, you know, the investment requests, with the developments uh, in all the internal uh, procedures. But uh, finally, he has defended strongly also this project because, of course, he's a very design affine guy. And uh, in the end, uh, to be courageous, uh, it's, uh, it's always uh, also in the interest of the end consumer. And we are doing our products in the end for the watch lovers, for the rado lovers, for uh, people who like uh, the watch, Swiss watchmaking culture, our strengths. And uh, we have people, uh, they want common watches, but we have definitely a community of people who search specific unique watches. And uh, therefore, uh, I definitely believe that with the Forma Fantasma through Square, uh, these lovers, they will find uh, their timepiece. Huh? You agree, Joachim? Yes, I do. So if there's, if there's somebody watching this who wants one of these watches, what do they have to do? Are there any left? Have they all sold or how can somebody get hold of one? No, no, they are just- it's very limited edition. Now. So it's brand new, just, I mean, coming from the oven. So only fresh. So we are going to start now selling them. Yes, we still don't have- Fresh out of the oven. Save some trust. 
<laughs> yes, <resend them. laughs> okay great thank you all very much uh, we'll be back tomorrow to look at the third watch that's been developed as part of um, this collaboration and for the third part of Rado Design Week uh, from a Phantasma Adrian and Hakim thank you all very much thank you thank you all bye bye all the best bye -bye. it was a pleasure bye thank you.